All right, Kim students, today we are going to learn how to do gas law calculations. So you'll need your blue notes and something to write with. Now we're actually going to start with the combined gas law, so you need to turn to page five. Uh, this one is the one that uses all of our variables. So we're going to start with that one and then it'll help explain the other ones. So basically the combined gas law lets us use pressure, volume, and temperature all at the same time. So none of them are constant. And our first example says a helium filled balloon at sea level has a volume of 2.1 liters at 0.998 atmospheres and 36 degrees Celsius. If it's released and rises to an elevation at which the pressure is 0 0.900 atmospheres and the temperature is 28 degrees Celsius, what will be the new volume of the balloon? Okay, the best way to approach these is as you read them, we say a helium filled balloon at sea level has a volume of 2.1 liters. That is my V1. At 0.998 atmospheres, that is my P1. And 36 degrees Celsius, that is T1. Now, if it's released and rises to an elevation at which the pressure is 0 0.900 atmosphere, we just saw P2, and the temperature is now 28 degrees, that's T2. They're going to ask us, what will the new volume of the balloon be? That is V2, and that is what we were trying to find. Okay, so formula we need is the one that has everything in it. P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 times V2 divided by T2. Now, we need to rearrange for V2, like we said, so it's going to look like this. Now, because we look at our information up at the top, we have a couple of things that need to be, we have to convert the units first. So, those temperatures need to be converted to Kelvin. So we're going to do that first. 36 degrees Celsius becomes 309 Kelvin and 28 degrees Celsius becomes 301 Kelvin. Now we have everything we need to plug into our formula. V2 equals 0.998 atmospheres times 2.1 liters times 301 Kelvin and that's divided by 309 Kelvin and uh, 0.900 atmospheres. So when we do the math we're going to have an answer of 2.27 liters. Now we got just the liters because atmospheres cancel, Kelvin cancels. So the only thing left was liters. So again, multiply across the top, divide by, on, by what's on the bottom. Now flip back to page four of your notes. Boyle's law is the one you use when you only have pressures and volume. And it says right here, the temperature remains constant. So if we had temperature, it would be down below, just like the combined gas law. But because they're telling us it's constant, we just get rid of it. Now, as we read it, let's see. A 5.0 liter container of nitrogen gas is at a pressure of one atmosphere. 5.0 liter is my starting point, that's V1. Pressure of a one atmosphere, that's my P1. Now, what is the new pressure? P2, that's what we're looking for, I circled it. If the volume is decreased to 500 milliliters, which is V2, and like they said, the temperature remains constant. So we only have pressures and volumes. So we need the formula that just has P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. Now, like I said, the one that's circled is the one we're looking for. We need P2 by itself, so you have to rearrange, and it'll look like this. Now, before we go to plug in any of our numbers, we need to check our units, and it looks like our liters and milliliters don't match, so we need to fix that. We'll convert one of them to, we'll convert the one that's 500 milliliters to liters. Now we can plug all of them in. P2 is going to equal one atmosphere times five liters divided by 0.5 liters. And this liters will cancel. So we know our answer is going to be an atmosphere. Now when we do that math, we get 10 atmospheres. 
Okay, the next gas law is Charles's law. The volume of a gas is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature at constant pressure. So if we started with our combined gas law, we could actually get rid of the pressures because they're constant. So if we read our example, a container of helium gas at 25 degrees Celsius in an expandable 500 milliliter container is heated to 80 degrees Celsius. What is the new volume if the pressure remains constant? Okay, so we know 25 degrees Celsius, that's my T1, that's my first temperature. And 500 milliliter container is my V1. And we're gonna heat that to 80 degrees Celsius. So that's T2, that's my new temperature. They wanna know what the new volume is gonna be. So V2 is what we're looking for if the pressure remains constant. Okay, so we need the formula V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And we need to isolate to have V2 by itself. So that's what this would look like. Now, unit conversions. We need to convert our temperatures. The temperatures have to be in Kelvin. So you want to do this right here. 25 degrees Celsius becomes 298 Kelvin and 80 degrees Celsius becomes 353 Kelvin. Once we get our conversions done, we plug them in. V2 is going to equal 500 milliliters times 353 Kelvin and divide it by 298 Kelvin. And our Kelvin temperatures are going to cancel out. So we're going to be left with milliliters. When we do the math in our calculator, we get 592 milliliters. Okay, our next gas law is Gay-Lussac's law. And it says the pressure of a gas is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature at constant volume. Now, because it says constant volume, that means we can ignore the volume. We're not going to use it for this problem. So we're just going to get rid of it. Now, as we read our problem, it says a tank of propane gas at a pressure of 3.0 atmospheres is cooled from 90 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. What is the new pressure if the volume remains constant? So we need to label our information. 3.01 atmospheres is P1. 90 degrees Celsius is T1. And 30 degrees Celsius, which is our new temperature, that's going to be T2. They're wanting to know what the new pressure is going to be. So that is our P2. That's what we're looking for. So because we don't have volume involved, we're going to use P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And when we rearrange for our unknown, it is P2 equals P1 times T2 divided by T1. Okay, so if we look at our problem, do we need to make any unit conversions? Yes, we have to get rid of those Celsius temperatures. So we've got to convert them to Kelvin like this. 90 degrees Celsius becomes 363 Kelvin. 30 degrees Celsius is the same as 303 Kelvin. So now we can plug everything in and figure out what our answer is. P2 equals 3.0 atmospheres times 303 Kelvin divided by 363 Kelvin. We can cancel out the Kelvins, and we know our final answer is going to be in atmospheres. And when we do the math, we get 2.5 atmospheres. All right, that's it for today's lesson, and we'll see you next time.